Hello everyone, welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be teaching you how to make your very own custom centerpiece for your table. Now I know there looks like there's a lot of power tools on this table, but do not let that discourage you from trying to make this because it is so easy and it is really going to elevate your decor to a next level. If you are new to our channel, Makers Gonna Learn is a membership-based crafting community where we bring you inspiration, motivation, and education to get your Cricut out and master it. Make sure to check us out at makersgonnalearn.com. You can like this video, follow our channel for more free content and hit that bell notification so that you can be notified every time we go live or premiere a new video. With all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the materials that you are going to need to create this centerpiece. So to start off, the base of our centerpiece is going to be a 4x6. Now when you purchase a 4x6, you're going to find them in either an 8 or 10 foot section, but you can have the hardware store that you buy this from cut it down into the size that you need. So a good rule of thumb is to measure your table to see how long of a section you need. You may not need a 4 foot section. This is a 4 foot section. Your table may not be long enough for that. So make sure you measure before you go purchase so that you know exactly what foot to tell them to cut it at and they will cut it down for you. I also want to make sure you guys know that a 4x6 is sometimes a little bit of an oddball size, so you may want to call around different hardware stores to see if they have it in stock before trying to run around and find one. Next up, you are going to need a drill. Now the drill bit that we're using today is called a spade bit. So what this does is this, you can you put place this point on your wood and it turns and it creates a perfect circle. So for the candlesticks, because we are going to be putting candlesticks in this, we are using a 7 8 spade drill bit. Next up, we have our palm sander. This is just to give our wood a nice even sand all the way across. Also because when you use the spade bit, it's going to give these get these edges kind of rough. So we just like to go over it with our palm sander. And especially because we are staining this, using this sander to sand all this down will really help the stain penetrate into the wood. I would suggest using a 120 or above grit sandpaper. Now I want you to remember when it comes to sandpaper, the higher the number, the finer the sandpaper. So if you have a 200 grit sandpaper, it's going to be really, really fine. And then the lower the number, the rougher it is. So we really want to give this a nice finish. So we want a higher grit sandpaper. Next up, you are definitely going to need a measuring tape. Now the reason we're going to need a measuring tape is because we're going to be putting 24 holes in this centerpiece so that we can put the candlesticks down in it and we're going to have to measure and mark this off so that we know exactly where to put our holes for the candlesticks. You're also going to need a pencil to mark where to drill. Next, once you have done all that, we are going to finish our centerpiece with some Minwax wood stain. We are using our favorite, this is Early American. It is absolutely our go-to stain. I feel like it is a good medium. It is not super light, but it's not too dark. So this is the stain that we're gonna be using today. We do have an old t-shirt that we cut up and use as stain rags. This is by far my favorite way to stain is just using an old t-shirt, an old drop cloth, something like that that can really get that stain into the wood grain. Last but not least, because y'all know we can't make anything without using a Maker's Gonna Learn file or font, we have a cream colored permanent vinyl as well as our Nikapa Light Grip Matte so that we can give this centerpiece a nice little touch that really is going to make it a true holiday centerpiece. Now that we have gone over all of our materials, let's go ahead and jump into making this project. So first thing that you're going to want to do is you're, you are going to want to give this a nice good sand. So we're going to go ahead with our palm sander and we're going to give this a sand. Remember I said we were using a 120 or higher grit sandpaper. So we're just going to make sure we sand out any imperfections that this piece of wood has. Now that we have sanded this, we're going to hop overhead so I can show you how we are going to measure this out. So as you can see, I have already mapped out one side and drilled this one side down um, because we're actually going to be working with 24 
candles. Now this is going to be something that you are going to have to determine how much you want, how many candles you want in your centerpiece, how long your centerpiece is. Um, so what I'm going to show you, we're working with a four foot piece of lumber. So what I have done, and this is what you all need to do, whatever length you want your centerpiece to be, we are going to measure that, make sure it is exactly that length. Like I said, we are working with four feet and then we're going to mark the center point of this piece of lumber. So as you can see, we have two feet. So we are going to mark it here. And I'm actually going to come down, mark it here, and then back up and mark it here. Once you have it marked, you can use a straight edge if you want, or really you can use anything you have that will keep the the edge straight. So I'm just going to use our Nicopa mat and I'm just going to mark this so that I know where the center line is all the way across. Now that we have marked our center point on our piece of lumber, we are then going to mark the center point here. So because this is a four by six, we are looking at three inches should be your center point. So I am going to mark three inches here and then I'm just going to keep going down my piece of lumber and keep marking three inches. I have marked three inches all the way across here. Once again, if you have a straight edge, you can use a straight edge. We're just going to use our Nicoba mat because this still gives us a straight edge and we're going to line this up. So you're going to line it up so it goes flush up against all of the marks that you just made. And we're just going to come through here and mark it. So now we have our center line marked this way as well as this way. And it's very faint. Don't worry, you can come back over. We're gonna sand this out, these light pencil marks, so it's not a big deal. Now that we have both of these center areas marked, we are going to determine how many candlesticks we want. So a good rule of thumb, right now we're working with 24 inch section. So you need to work with a number that is going to be divisible by 24. So you're, think, you're looking at two inches, three inches, four inches would be a little more space out. Because we want so many candles on our centerpiece, we're actually only gonna be working in two inch sections. So what we're gonna do from here, we're just going to come down here and mark every two inches. Once we have our two inch sections marked, we're just going to take the straight edge of our mat and we're just gonna mark those. The good part about this is you do not have to be 100% precise. We are building something, but it's not like it has to fit together. We're just going to be drilling holes and we just want to measure to make sure that our candles are close enough to evenly spaced apart that nobody's going to be able to tell. So once you have your four by six divided into two halves and you have it into two inch sections, we're then going to come in here and we're going to mark alternating sides where we're gonna place our candles. So as you can see on this side, I started here and then moved down to this section and up and down. So we're gonna do that on the opposite side as well. So since this one is up here, I'm just gonna place an X here and then keep moving down my four by six until I reach the end. Now your X's do not have to be in the exact center of where you measured out, but as long as it's in the general area of the center of that block, it will be fine. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to take our spade bit and we are going to drill a circle into our four by six. A little tip of information. So if you want your candlesticks all the same all the way across, one thing you can do is you can either take a piece of tape or a marker and you can draw on your drill bit where you need to stop. So what will happen is once you're, you will be able to see how deep the drill bit goes and once your mark 
reaches the top of the wood, then you, can, you will know to stop. That way they will all be the same all the way across. We're actually wanting our candles to sit higher and lower. So some of my holes are going to be more shallow while others are going to be deeper because we really like the variation of the different heights of the candles. Now we're going to start the process of drilling all of these holes. Now that you've finished drilling all the holes, what we're gonna do, I have a pretty large trash can sitting here. Um, I'm going to actually flip this over and I'm going to get all of the extra sawdust out of these holes that we have drilled. Now that I've gotten all of the extra sawdust out of our centerpiece, I'm going to grab my palm sander and I'm just gonna give this a nice even sand so that I can get these little edges off of here. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 220 sand sandpaper and I'm actually just going to roll it up and then come in here in these holes and get off these edges that are deep down in there that the palm sander could not get. Now keep in mind the sanding of these holes does not have to be perfect because you're actually going to take your candlestick and it's going to go in down in there and it's not going to show so you're not going to be able to see that so it's really not that big of an issue. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my surface for the staining portion. Now this is going to be entirely up to you if you are staining um, on something that you don't want to get stain on. Make sure that you grab either a trash bag and cut it off. You can get a drop cloth or something to protect your surface. If you are standing outside and it doesn't matter, then you can skip this step. But we are going to protect our work surface here and then we will begin staining. Now that we have our work surface prepared and ready to stain, I am going to put my gloves on because I do not want to get stain on my hands. Um, and then we're going to open the stain and start staining. Now, one thing I do want to say you definitely need to stain in a well-ventilated area. Um, if not, then you need to wear some proper PPE. Um, we are in a very well-ventilated studio, so and we've got the door open, so we are good to go. But make sure that you are staining in a well-ventilated area. One thing you are going to want to do before you start staining is make sure that your stain is really well shaken up because you don't want that all the stuff that settles on the bottom to be on the bottom. So we're just going to make sure our stain is shaken up and then we're going to open up our stain. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take our scrap piece of cloth, dip it down into our stain and start the staining process. Now one thing that's going to be a personal preference is the staining inside these holes. Um, you can if you want to. Remember our candlesticks are going to be in there, but if you want to, you can. It will probably, it's going to give it more of a finished look, but it's going to be really hard to get down in those crevices. So my advice is just to stain up toward the edges up here, and then we'll wipe away the excess. Now, once you have finished staining, you're going to want to let this cure for about 24 hours before we move on to our next step.
Now while our centerpiece is drying from the stain, we're going to hop over to Design Space and I'm going to show you what font we're going to be using to put on the centerpiece. So here in Design Space, so that we can really elevate this and make it a true holiday centerpiece, we're actually going to put the word joy on the side. So it's not overwhelmingly holiday, but it still has a holiday feel to it. So we're just going to come down here to text and the font that we're going to be using today is demonstrate. Now we're going to come over here to Makers Gonna Learn and I'm going to show you exactly how you can download Makers Gonna Learn fonts and files. We are going to go to our font section. So like I said earlier, Makers Gonna Learn is a membership based craft community where we bring you thousands of cut files a month, hundreds of fonts, and you get commercial license to use all of this. So if you wanted to make these centerpieces to sell, you could use one of our fonts and would have the commercial license to be able to sell it. So we're actually going to be using the font demonstrate today. We are going to click on this and the one thing I love about our website is that you can type in the word that you plan on using to see if it looks right. So today I think we're going to be using the word joy and I'm not 100% sure if I want a lowercase j or a capital J. So let's try it both ways. So first we're going to try with a lowercase. So I can see that this lowercase j and the y kind of go together um, and I'm not really a fan of that. So let me try it with an uppercase j and I like that a lot better. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here to the cloud icon and I'm going to click download. It's going to download as a zip file. You're going to open that zip file up. From there you are going to install the font on your computer. And then we are going to go back over to Design Space. We are going to go to View, Reload, because once you download a new font, you do have to reload your Design Space to be able to find it. We are going to bring our text back in here, come up here to our system fonts, type in Demonstrate, and there we have it. So now we're just going to type out Joy and we are going to size it according to our centerpiece. Now we are working with a four by six, so our height, we can do it about, I would do about three and a half to give you a little room up, both up and down. So from there, we don't have to do anything else. All we have to do is click make it. We are going to be doing this on the maker to series today, but you can do this on a maker, an explore or even a joy. And we are just going to be cutting this on premium vinyl. Now that we have our word size, we're just going to go ahead and push it through and have our Cricut cut it. Now we're just going to cut this. Take our extra vinyl off the mat. And then I'm just going to go ahead and weed this while it's on the mat. I love weeding while my design is still on the mat because it works kind of like your third hand. So you, it's very easy to weed. Now that our centerpiece is ready, we are just going to add our transfer tape down and we're going to burnish from the front. And I also like to burnish from the back. I really think it allows the vinyl to stick really well to the transfer tape. And now we're going to grab our centerpiece and attach the word joy to the centerpiece. Now to apply this, we are just going to lay this down. Once again, I'm going to get my burnishing tool to burnish it down onto the wood. Once you have that burnished down, we are just going to take our transfer tape off. Now you are going to want to be careful with this because it may be a little finicky to take off. So just be very careful. You may want to use your weeding tool to come back through and make sure that it's down very well.
Wow, that was a lot, but you have an absolutely beautiful centerpiece that you can use for years and years. One thing that I want to make sure you guys gain from this video is to not be afraid of power tools. Power tools are really a crafter's best friend once you learn how to use them. They are a great thing to have in your back pocket so that you can pull it out whenever you need to. So I really hope that you all have learned more and are more confident in using power tools. And I can't wait to see what you all create. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.